Good afternoon from Ras Al Khaima, where I'm currently making my way through this beautiful desert. That's right, I'm escaping, escaping the dreaded Rona. I, we're better to hide out in these perilous times than somewhere remote. You know, they're all doing it. All the travel vloggers, all the Los LeBlancs, all the Gabriel travelers, they're all doing RVs, they're camping. Me, I'm going to be staying somewhere that kind of looks like a tent, uh, but I won't be roughing it. <laughs> Nobody comes to the UAE to rough it, do they? They come for a bit of luxury. So that is my plan. About five minutes drive down here, there is a luxury tented villa with my name on it. Oh, I spy some camels. Loads of them on both sides. All right, I'm going to pull over. Are they safe to approach? I don't know. <laughs> Are they just like horses where they're kind of docile and you can kind of touch their faces and stuff? Hello. You enjoying your dinner? Or is it a wee snack? I think it's just a wee snack. Just grazing. He's looking at me anyway. Ah, oh, they seem friendly, at least. Look at you, you're chowing. Oh, you're... <laughs> I got startled there. Look at you chowing. You're loving it, aren't you? Aye, they don't seem to mind. Get right nice and close to them. Should I dare touch one? Or is that when it's gonna bite my bloody hand off? <laughs> I wonder if I can touch them. Hello. Oh, they're kind of like, okay. I'm not gonna bother. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the correct etiquette. Are you allowed to touch them or not? Hello, how are you? Okay, let's get to this resort then. Okay, here we are. Okay, let's get checked in. Right here, in the garden, there's a bloody oryx. <laughs> An Arabian oryx, just chilling in the garden. Hello mate, are you any more danger? Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> okay, I was going to ask if he was any more dangerous than the bloody camels. Oh, okay, I think I should, probably shouldn't have taken a shortcut through his bloody... Uh, <laughs> I probably should have taken a shortcut through there. I probably should have walked along the path. Uh, okay, that's a fun start. To the <laughs> that's a fun start to the bloody stay, isn't it? Okay, let's get checked in. <sighs> bloody stay to me. Oh, it looks like they've got valley parking. I didn't need to park my car myself and tackle a bloody oryx, did I? <laughs> oh, my God. Hello, mate, where do I check in? This, this way, oh, okay. Oh. Okay, here we go. Absolutely sweltering, 44 degrees out there, we're wearing a bloody mask. It's crazy. Hello, I want to check in. Yeah, you can have a seat. Here. Sit down, oh, okay. I'm a bit dirty, I don't want to get your... Uh, I got attacked by an oryx. You yeah. There's the washroom. The washroom, yeah, oh, okay. Ah, uh, okay. After 10 minutes, buggy will be arrive your villa. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah. they have this buggy service to get around the yeah, resort, 24 yeah? Hours 24 hours? Yes. Okay, good. So, I don't know how far away my room is. Ah, uh, okay. We'll see. We'll see if it's walking distance or not. For your man. We have a bicycle also. You have bicycles? Yes, if you like to ride a bicycle, you can ride any time. Ah, okay. It's this wee minaret or something. What is this? Tower for what? Yeah, this one is here like one of our Alwadi Tower. Ah. It's nice for sunset and uh, sunrise. Well, you can go up? You yeah, can go up the tower? Yeah, for the view? Ah, oh, very nice. Ah, oh, very nice. So that must be 402 there then. This is my one. Beautiful. This is my new home. Nice view. Fantastic. 
Okay, home sweet home. Let's check this gaff out then. Let's see. There's my bike. Let's see if it's as nice as the photos on their website, the Ritz Carlton Al Wadi Desert. Let's check it out. Oh, that's your man's minibar in there. He's no daft. He comes to an expensive place, but he brings his own munchies. And there's his own swimming pool right there. Who should we explore first? There's multiple, multiple parts to this. Right, let's check the bathroom out, I guess, because look at the size of that bloody bathtub. That's massive. Isn't that the biggest bloody bathtub you've ever seen in your life? That's huge. You could easily get two people in that. I think that's the idea, actually. Probably couples come here for honeymoons and stuff. Probably isn't many single guys coming here on their own. Like a sado, or am I a sado? Because you know, these couples, they come here to celebrate their anniversaries, don't they? That's at special occasions. But your man, he is also celebrating a special occasion. He is also celebrating an anniversary. He is celebrating the anniversary of breaking up with this crazy ex girlfriend. Yes! Freedom! <laughs> okay, let's check this place out. That's kind of cool. In the middle, you've got all that big, well, we would call that a poofy. I think it's like a poofy, right? It's like a big version of a poofy. It's, I don't know if that's a politically correct word to use nowadays, but it was a poof it was called. It's basically like, <laughs> that word has a different meaning nowadays, but somewhere where you would like rest your feet. My old granny, she had one, a big poof in the living room <laughs> to rest her feet on. Uh, that's what looks like a big version of one of them. Aye, so that's it. It's maybe like you're in here, your missus, she's getting uh, all dolled up and stuff and uh, I don't know, you're maybe tying your laces or doing something that a man does. Uh, but aye, that's nice. It leads right out into the the deck there for the private pool. That's bigger actually than it looked like in the in the photos. I'm gonna go and check that out. Maybe last after I explore everything. Um, aye, let's have a look. This actually is a. Uh, I don't know if that's stained. That looks like it's stained, isn't it? Is that just the the grain or is it? I should probably take these off, I'm making it worse. <laughs> Wiping my bloody dirty feet on it. Uh, no, that is actually stained. That's, uh, the carpet's kind of stained. That's disappointing, isn't it? And come to think about it, the, the bloody floor's all scratched. Looks like this kind of like oak wood. Um, and it's all scratched. So I guess this place is, uh, it's seen a bit of wear. I don't know how old it is, actually. But uh, that's nice, isn't it? Absolutely massive overhead rain shower with plenty of room to move about. Look at the size of that. Woo hoo hoo! <laughs> Fantastic. It's pretty nice. And then Asprey, I guess that's a fancy brand of uh, shower gels and all that kind of stuff. Ah, that's kind of nice. So, wardrobes in here. This is the room for getting ready and stuff, isn't it? Uh, Oh, there's something behind here. I guess that'll be the bog. Uh, it is the bog. Uh, just the normal bog in B day. Uh, this is kind of cheap plastic. That's just like the same kind of cheap plastic you'd have in your house, or even cheaper than that. That's uh, aye. <laughs> it's not up to the standard of the Oberoi in Calcutta, is it? If you've seen that video where I had a nice plush wooden toilet seat to take a classy dump. Aye. No, that's just a fairly, fairly cheap looking thing. That's uh, kind of disappointing. But that bath's fantastic. That the more, <laughs> it more than makes up for it. The bloody bath. That's fantastic. Right. Let's continue exploring. And don't forget the mini bar. Get the man's mini bar. Oh, he's no daft. Right. Living room. Dear Mr. Philip, Thank you for staying at the Ritz Carlton. Okay, and for everybody who asks, when did you film it? When did you film it? That's when I filmed it. It was 1908-20 at 3.20 p.m. So now you don't need to ask, do you? Right, um, the bed. Oh, absolutely massive. Absolutely massive. I'll actually take a lie down on that right now. Ah, <laughs> awesome. I can indeed confirm that this bed is comfortable. A lot more comfortable than 
That mattress I slept on in Medan, do you remember that? Do you remember that video? If you've been watching my videos a while, you'll remember the one, the hotel in Medan, the cheapest hotel I've ever stayed in in my life. The mattress, I thought, I thought the hotel, they probably found it in a bloody skip or something, it was so bad. Uh, this mattress, they definitely didn't find it in a bloody skip. But uh, uh, that hotel, that was probably the worst bed I've ever had in my life, and that was the cheapest hotel I've ever stayed in in my life. Just for fun, just for kicks and giggles, it was an $8 hotel. And uh, yeah, the cheapest hotel I've ever stayed in my life compared to this, the most expensive, by far, the most expensive hotel I've ever stayed in, in my life. I'm paying, oh, I don't even know if I can spit the words out. <laughs> it's so painful. It's so painful for a Scotsman to admit that he's paying 4,305 dirhams per night for this. That's like, oh, oh. <laughs> it's like 900 quid or about 1,200. US dollars, but breakfast is included. Breakfast is included. I asked them if I could have breakfast in my room and they said, no, 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 no. And your package, sir, is only included in the hotel restaurant. $1,200. Come on. Cut me a break. Anyway, um, talking about being a cheap Scotsman, I think it's time to load up this minibar with your man's own goodies, your man's own munchies. <laughs> Let's see how much he's saving. Let's see how much he is saving. That's the menu here, is it? Okay, I'll take it into the light so you can see it. So Snickers, they're saying is 10 dirhams, and the soft drinks, 18 dirhams. Not too bad, it's about half the price of the mini bar at the Atlantis. It was 30 dirhams for a can of Coke there, and this is 18. The normal price is 250, by the way, and that's how much I paid for the one that I'm gonna load up in this fridge right here. I wonder if they actually have goods, because, ah, oh, okay. So at Atlantis, because of the whole Rona situation, they weren't providing a mini bar to reduce contact points. So yes, not only am I saving money, I'm actually having stuff. There you go, all the sugar-free goodness, all the asparatum. Oh, I love a bit of asparatum, it's fantastic. And so is kombucha. I learned about this from Joe Rogan. It's some probiotic healthy drink. They make it from fermented tea. So this one is, imported from Poland, so I'm gonna enjoy that. Along with some dates, uh, your man's still addicted to bloody dates. Uh, they're fantastic. The, the dates that you get in the UAE are amazing, and these ones, I like th I like my dates a little bit special. I don't just like to eat the plain dates. I like to have the ones that are, oh, covered in chocolate, have nuts through them. And look at the, all these ones have like little cashews through them, and they've also got like yogurt and almonds, like um, pistachios, like that, it looks like ground up peanuts and desiccated coconut and stuff. So that's gonna be nice. I'm gonna be uh, doing lengths in that pool and just to have the dates on the end and just like munching them. That's gonna be, well, I don't know, having the view of the desert. It's just, it's just nice, isn't it? It's just nice. It's just the simple things in life that makes you happy. And what else have I got? I've got this. <laughs> Found this in the supermarket, surprises. I was surprised to see this, but uh, in Scotland, we have this thing called shortbread. It's a very simple, it's a very simple snack. We're very simple people. We don't like fancy stuff, do we? <laughs> We're happy with just plain stuff like shortbread, which is just uh, wheat, wheat flour, butter, sugar, and salt. I think that's the only four ingredients that you would get in shortbread. Wheat, butter, sugar, salt. So uh, yeah, I was surprised to see this. Walkers, who are the most famous probably manufacturers of shortbread, they have made a special camel shaped version for the UAE. So <laughs> I just picked it up because I thought it was kind of kind of sweet. Scotland and UAE collaborating. And then I've got this as well. Some sub chips, parsnip, taro, sweet potato, yucca, and batata. Fantastic. Right, I think it's time to check this pull out. Save the best for last. Okay, there we go. Oh, oh, absolutely roasting. Oh, ho, 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 ho. let's check the temperature of the pool. Oh, oh, that's just nice. The guy said, who was checking me in, he said uh, the pool is temperature controlled to 29 degrees. So, perfect, perfect. It's down here. There's a wee bit to wash your feet. I guess if you want to go exploring in the desert. You can come back, wash your feet, jump in the pool. Look at this place. This would be lovely. 
I was going to say it'd be lovely if you had a family. I would think it'd be lovely just really if you came with your girlfriend or something like that. I don't think a family would come here. And the reason I think that is, remember that bloody shower? <laughs> it's like the shower's like a big cubicle in the open. Where is it? Over here. Aye. It's like just wide open, you know, like if your mum or dad was taking a shower, you'd have to like look at them, right? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the reason I don't think families would come here. I think it's just mostly couples, mostly people celebrating anniversaries, like your man, freedom! Right, let's check this pool out. In fact, I'm definitely going for a swim right now. That's definitely what your man's doing. Bought a kombucha, some dates, and a wee swim. Let's do it. Let's do it, guys. Oh, lovely. Perfect. Absolutely bloody perfect. Oh, let's see how deep it is. Oh, about this height. About this height. About a metre and a half. Ah. Oh, happy days, happy days. And completely quiet, not a bloody sound other than the wind. And the sound of the pool, obviously. But look, it's completely secluded. Complete privacy. Your man could be swimming in the nude if he wanted to. He will be after he turns the camera off. He won't be doing that with the camera on again after the last time. I thought I was going to get all the girls. If you guys had seen that video I did in um, the hot springs in Sumatra. I thought I was going to get all the girls with that video. You should see the analytics. 99% men who watch that video. Oh, never again. So the trunks, they stay on. Mm. This is nice, right? I'm going to do a few laps. Lengths. Oh. Yeah, the length of this pool, I want to say it's about... I want to say this is about 10 meters. I don't think there's a measurement or anything, but I'm like 185, so I'm just trying to measure my body length. Multiples, it's like more than five, so yeah, about a 10 meter pull. It's not too bad. You can actually do some, you can actually do some length. Ah, the only thing that's a bit annoying is this bar comes right down to here. You see this? This bar, so. You have to kind of like swim this way if you want to do lengths, otherwise you end up smacking that bar, which I just did. So, <laughs> never mind though. Right, taste test time for the bloody dates. I gotta eat these chocolate ones first, the chocolate ones are all melting in the sun, so. The nut ones, the nut ones, they'll survive, but the chocolate ones. I have a good excuse to eat them quickly. How many of them are there? One, two, three, four, eight. So I'll get these munched. Oh, they're so nice. They're so nice. Mm. I'm telling you, dates as good as any candy bar, but much more healthy, much more healthy. Right, mission complete. No chocolate dates were wasted. Okay, I'm gonna do like 100 lengths. I'm actually gonna make my target 100. Should it be 100 each way or 100 returns? Let's do 100 returns. I'm gonna do 100 return lengths and then I'll chat to you later. <laughs> oh, your man's having fun. Having fun. Wee bird having a wee drink, trying to sneak up on him. Ah, no chance. They're all coming. All these birds flying around, loads of them. They all come and just kind of like perch on the end and sip the water. 
This must be like an oasis for them. In the middle of the bloody desert where there's no water and they've got all these swimming pools around. <laughs> See if I can spot another one. So I'm following up the relaxing swim with a relaxing read of this amazing story, Shogun by James Clavell, a classic, an epic, 1300 pages in fact. Actually I was listening to the audiobook which is like 50 hours long and decided I like this story, I'll go out and buy the physical hard text because that's just the way I like to consume books is that sometimes late at night I want to close my eyes, have somebody read me a bedtime story, that's quite nice isn't it? And other times like right now, it's almost sunset relaxing in my room. I like to have the physical text to read. That's nice. Anyway, the uh, audiobook 50 hours long, probably take me like 150 hours to read this. Not that I'm that slow a reader. I'm a slow reader, but I'm not that slow. It's just the way that I consume books like this is they always making like historical references and stuff. And then after like two or three pages, I can like stop and I go on Wikipedia something. I'll go on Wikipedia something about Henry VIII or uh, whatever and uh, find out what they're talking about. And then other times I just like, I'll stop and I'll think and I'll extrapolate the information that they've given me and put myself in that position and like think about different things. And that's just the way I consume books. I'm a very slow reader. This will take me, oh, it better not take me that long because this has taken up like 20% of my luggage. <laughs> but uh, it'll, take me a, it'll take me a bloody while. Anyway, I'm thinking uh, maybe in like 10, 15 minutes, I might go out, take the bicycle. There's, I've got two bicycles in my garden. I don't know if I can see them from here. Uh, there's two bicycles around there, but I might take them out and uh, have a wee explore around the neighbourhood. Okay, I've got the chest mount on the GoPro. I will definitely not be wearing that. Look at the bloody state of that. Horrible. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so this street that I'm on, you can see how far the villas are apart and they're kind of separated by these sand dunes. So this is the highest category of the tented villas. There's another street that has tented villas down here, uh, but they're closer together. They, those were a bit cheaper, they're maybe like 10% cheaper or something, save a hundred bucks. I won't show you them. Hi, right, this is them here. I can see already they're kind of like close together. Hello! <laughs> How are you? Just having a wee look around. I'm exploring. <laughs> so these are the Al Khaimah villas, right? Yeah, uh, so these ones are closer together. Uh, yeah, having a wee look around. So these, these, these villas are the same as the other ones, they're just, they're just less privacy, right? The thing which is different uh -huh. is between uh, the space of the, each other villa ah, so they have more... the front of the villa as well. Oh, they have a, the ones I have have a better view. I'm in the Al Sahari. Yes. Yeah, it has a better view, yeah. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. Cool. <laughs> Alright, so there you go. You can see there. You can see there how close they are together. So that's the difference. You pay an extra hundred bucks for some sand dunes between your villa and the next one. And a wee bit of a better view, the guy said. Is there some uh, owl show or something like yes, that? Yes, yes, the falcon show. Falcon show, where do I go for that? Uh, go straight, uh -huh. run the board, take left. Left, yeah. Go a little bit, uh -huh. after that you'll become right. Okay. Again, you will take the right, uh -huh. go straight, it will become like this. Okay. Then you will reach in the palm house. Uh -huh. Palm house is it called? Yes, in the palm house. Uh -huh. After that, you will take left. Uh, okay. Again. Here's... It will come like this. Uh -huh. Then after go straight. Yep. Again, you will take right. Go straight, you will find the... <laughs> easy. <Yeah>. Easy. <laughs> easy to find. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. Then get straight, left at the roundabout, right, windy path. And then, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Oh, 
Oh. Right, well, your man's strong legs got a break because this is Grand Theft Auto. Russell Kaima edition! <laughs> Just as well that I boosted this thing, the Falcon show is miles away. I'm actually surprised at how big this whole this whole complex is. Huge. Right. I'll sit for like five or ten minutes and watch what's going on. So is it a hawk or a falcon? A hawk, okay. A hawk, yes. So left hand? A left hand, yes. Okay. okay. So I just hold it out or yes, what? I need to put food there. You, you need to put food, food yeah. on, on top of it? No, here. on. So you can hold uh -huh. your camera now? Yeah. You, you okay, yeah. Now. Okay. Where is it? All right. Oh. All right. Let me throw him. Oh, hello. What's your name? What's his name? His name is Charlie. Charlie. Hey, Charlie. All right. So Charlie, he did well. He fly to everyone. So now I'm going to reward Cutie. him. I'm going to give him a right, You're a handsome piece. chap. So that's a happy moment of a bed of prey. So handsome. Oh. <laughs> well done, now I get the free head massage. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm going to remove the gloves. Okay. Now what? I just stand here? This is his home now, right? Yeah, okay, no oh! <laughs> thank well okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. That was nice. All right, you can give him a round, yeah? <laughs> ah, this is what a Scottish camel looks like. Delicious! <laughs> so I abandoned that hawk show halfway through just because so bloody hot. I'm just sitting there sweating, just pouring my sweat. My t-shirt was actually soaked through. Absolutely soaked. Hang on a minute, I'm gonna finish this. Mm. Yum. So my t-shirt was soaked through. It's uh, just really uncomfortable. So this place, it has like a big adventure centre and stuff. You can do all sorts of activities out in the desert. Me, I think I'm just going to be spending a lot of time relaxing here, to be honest, relaxing in the villa. And um, when I was going around, I seemed to have a couple of big restaurants. And uh, again, I'm thinking, there's an in-room dining menu. I'd probably actually prefer to have dinner here in the privacy of my own room than get dressed up and go to, oh, there's a... One of those oryx that attacked me, you probably can't see it because it's really far away and it's dark, but right there, just wandering, it's a wild one. Wild one, because this is the wild, open, desert. I don't know if you can see it, it's the white thing right there. I'm going to get, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to get out the pool and go close to it, I've learned my lesson. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I'm probably going to have dinner here in my room. I'll try and find something Emirati in the in-room dining menu, or at least Arabic. They probably have Arabic foods good for like meat, kebabs and all that kind of things, right? So uh, yeah, at least then I don't have to have the embarrassment of vlogging. Well, I guess I could eat without vlogging. That is possible as well. <laughs> but for you guys, I will have dinner here and uh, I'll have dinner with you guys, won't I? I'll, uh, you can join me. Okay, here's what we're working with on the old room service menu. There's this, it looks Arabic, hot mezzi platter. Now mezzi, I think that means nibbles. It's like little snacks, little starters or something. Not really something for a main meal, but uh, something you would maybe, the platter, maybe something you would share between a group as your starter or something, but I'm gonna eat it all myself. There's meat kibbe, don't know what that is. Spinach something, cheese something. So uh, a good mix of uh, a few different things. And then for the main course, they have all the lobster and ribeye steak and stuff like that but I'm trying to find the local stuff and there is this Arabic mixed grill at the top here Arabic mixed grill it says it's got lamb kebab, shish tawuk, lamb chops, lamb kofta and some other stuff it's mostly lamb it says it's a mixed grill you'd think a mixed grill would be chicken, beef, lamb a bunch of different stuff but it's all lamb it's, so it's like a, an Arabic lamb grill I'm gonna get the Arabic lamb grill but uh, just now it's like 7.30, it's like 7.30 p.m. Uh, the room service is open like 24 hours basically. There's a limited menu after 
11 p.m. But on the limited menu, the mixed grill is still on it. So uh, yeah, it's 7:30 just now. I'm not really that hungry because I'm eating camels and dates. <laughs> I, I can't stop myself. Mmm, delicious Scottish camel. Um, I'm just going to lounge around, read my book, do some more swimming in the night time when I'm not getting burnt and maybe like in like three hours time or something I'll order the dinner and I'll see you guys then. Peace. Oh yeah, wee beauty. My Arabic feast has arrived. That is the mixed grill right there. And this is the hot messy platter and all these things, I've found out what they all are. I've done my research on Wikipedia while I was weighing. So I can tell you while I'm eating what I'm eating. And I've got a wee mango milkshake to go along with my kombucha and my dates to make all together a nice wee dinner. Right, first things first, this thing, this ball shaped thing should be a meat kibbe. A meat kibbe is ground meat and grains. There you go there. It's kind of like ground meat and I think there's a bit of onion through that and I think that's on the outside it's some kind of grain and I guess it's fried. Mmm! Oh wow! You know what that tastes like? Mmm! That tastes exactly like a scotch pie. It tastes like a scotch pie, wow! Mmm! Very nice. Hi. Meat kibbe! A Scotsman approved Arabian delight. <laughs> mm. Mm. Ah, mango milkshake's lovely, nice and smooth. And these things that look like spring rolls, they're not spring rolls, they are cheese rakakat. Rakatat tat tat, cheese rakakat. And supposedly inside these it's uh, feta and mozzarella, so it's going to be like kind of. But they're, they're hot, all this is hot, so it's going to be like all melted and stuff inside. Should be nice. Mmm. That is nice. I'm not really tasting the feta. I think it's all mozzarella. I think maybe this one is all mozzarella. I'm not really tasting the, the feta. Mmm. I don't know. I do taste it. I do taste it. Yeah. So, mozzarella and feta, spring rolls, cheese, rakakat. Okay, and this one must be the spinach fat tire. A fat tire is just a pie, so it's a spinach pie basically. No, oh, no, it's not. No spinach in there. This must be the meat sambo sec. I think this must be the meat the meat sambo sec, which is like a pastry. Yeah, it's supposedly a meat and onion pastry, and there is meat and onion in there, so. These ones must be the spinach, uh, the spinach fat tire. It's very nice though, very nice. Mm. Okay, spinach fat tire, this fried spinach pie. Every time I eat on camera, I make a mess. Only when I'm on camera, not in real life, not in normal times, <laughs> I don't. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> This is a spinach for tire, is a spinach pie, and your man's not going to make a mess when he eats it. Mmm. It's really, uh, the spinach is, the spinach is like soaked in lemon. It's been really, uh, it's soaked in some kind of like dense, citrusy, lemony flavour. It's quite nice, it's quite nice. Okay, Arabic mezzi platter complete. And what was the winner out of those four different Arabic items? Well, do you want to take a guess? Do you want to take a guess what I choose as the winner? Of course, it's the one that tastes like a bloody Scotch pie. <laughs> the meat kibbe, meat kibbe it's called. So I'll remember that one in the future for when I'm eating Arabic food. That I'll always be asking for the meat kibbe. Okay, time to get stuck into this mixed grill then. Let's have a wee look at what we've got. So uh, apparently this is the chicken here. This is shish tawuk. So shish tawuk, it's kind of um, a marinated chicken kebab style. Then we've got lamb chops. They're absolutely tiny, aren't they? Those two lamb chops. And then it's just lamb kebab. That's just like the chunks of lamb meat there. And this is the lamb kofta. And the kofta is just basically like a patty, like a burger, except it's a different shape. So it's lamb burger, lamb kebab, lamb chops, and chicken kebab. Right, let's give the chicken a go first. 
Mmm. Nice and soft. Next, the lamb. Let's see if it's as tender as the chicken. Not quite as tender as the chicken, but it's all right. The lamb kofta. Tastes like a burger. <laughs> yeah, it just it tastes like a lamb burger, basically. That's basically what it is. It's a lamb burger. Yeah. It's all right. I mean, the, the, the lamb, it's, it tastes just like ordinary lamb to me. Nothing special. The chicken is really nice, though. The marinated chicken, it's, it's really nice and tender, really, really flavorful. And these uh, two lamb chops, tiny, aren't they? That's uh, mm. oh, that's nice barbecued, just seared. Mm. Look who's come to visit! A wee cat crying for food. Hello, are you hungry? Should I feed it? Should I feed it some of my dinner? What would cats like? Some of that chicken. Okay, I'll give it the best stuff. I'll give it some of the chicken. Okay, here you go. Can you see me or can you smell this chicken? Okay, let's open the door. Hello, welcome to my home. Oh, you hiding? Are you shy? Are you shy? Look, it's for you. I can't put it on the carpet. Look, I'll put it here. There you go. Enjoy yourself, it's chicken. It's shish tawuk. That's my best one. I gave you the best of all my meat. And you don't like it. Are you going to crap? Are you going to crap? Why is... What does cats mean when their tail's all stiff like that? I thought he was going to do a dump there. <laughs> I gave you chicken, mate. What are you crying for? If you're not crying for food, what are you crying for? If you're not crying for food, what is it? It's scratching. That's usually when they want to do a dump, isn't it? Like... They scratch their litter tray over their doings. What do you want? Because I've given you food. I've given you food and you're not taking it. So I don't know what you want. I've no idea. I'll take this and put it outside for it. Look. For you. Go. 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 How am I going to get rid of this? How am I going to get rid of this? Beat it. Beat it, mate. I've given you food, you don't want it. What else would you possibly want from me? It's definitely not cuddles, is it? Because you're kind of scared. You're a scaredy cat. Hello. Are you going to go for the... Look how skinny it is. No wonder. And it's just scratching at the carpet. Scratching. I have no idea what that means for cats. This thing's feral, isn't it? Feral, feral. It's a... Uh... Doesn't belong to anybody for sure. Mate, chicken. 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 Eat it. You're skinny. You're, you're skinny. Eat the chicken. Oh, he's going for it. Or she. I think it's a she. Oh, go on. Eat it. Having a good smell. A wee lick. Maybe it's the marinade that doesn't like it. But the only other thing I've got is lamb. Surely cats eat chicken. It's because it's a bird. But they don't eat lambs, do they? Lambs are much bigger than cats. Oh, he's going for it. Good girl, good girl. That's how you get strong. That is how you get strong. There you go, share the whole thing. Share it all up. You're good. You're good. I'll give her another piece. Okay, I'll give her another piece. Okay. There we go. At this stage, You've, eat, you've eaten more than me at this point. You've eaten more of this meat than me. It's more of the chicken shish to wook. More of the chicken shish to wook. Okay. There you go. That should do. Okay, I'm going to finish off the rest of my dinner myself, mate. Okay. Good night. Pussy galore. Oh, I'm stuffed. I finished it. I finished it with all the help from my feline friend. I finished the meal and overall I thought that meal was kind of ordinary. It's like kind of just meal you'd get at any kind of cheap 
cafeteria or even a three star hotels in room dining service for about a quarter of the price. But, uh, yeah, so the meal wasn't worth it. What about the room? Is the room worth 1200 bucks? Well, uh, of course not. No hotel room is worth 1200 bucks, but I just thought it'd be kind of nice. A one off kind of special thing to celebrate my anniversary. <laughs> uh, yeah, but relative to countries like Indonesia, even other Arabic countries like Jordan, Egypt, what you get for 1200 bucks there would just be like something completely different. Or you would get this for much less. I got a friend in Bali right now who's paying 1200 a month for like this ball of mansion villa with like a bigger swimming pool and multiple floors and stuff like that. So yeah, that's just the difference, you know, like you're in the UAE, you expect you're going to just pay massively high prices for things. And it's not like I can go to Bali, is it? They're not allowing international tourists right now. So uh, yeah, I guess I'll spend my money here in the UAE and support a country that uh, has been proactive with their international tourism. UAE, they opened up to international tourism at the start of July. And then other countries, Thailand, Indonesia, they're like, they don't even have any plans right now. You know, like who knows, it could be 2021 before they even open up. So yeah, uh, I'll spend my money here and support this country's economy since they have been proactively thinking about uh, international tourism. Okay, so I'm just gonna chill. Got a wee bit of work to do at my desk. Uh, this desk, it's not comfortable at all, the chair. This is one of my pet peeves. I think I might have mentioned it before in videos, but the arms don't go under the bloody desk. Who designs these things? The arms are supposed to go under the desk. And then look, so watch, I'll show you. I'll show you. If I'm sitting here, right? And I have my back here for good posture. Look how far away I am from the, from the laptop. I can't, there. That's as far as I can get to my laptop. So I'm like this, basically. Uh, I can't get a comfortable position to work. Not that anybody's really gonna be coming here and doing any work, but it's still nice to have a nice comfortable desk set up. I mean, I'm sure the reason they don't have a proper office chair and desk and stuff like that is the furnishings have to keep in with the rest of the room, right? I mean, and that desk does. It does go with the rest of the room, doesn't it? It really, it really fits in and it looks really nice. And it uh, looks very elegant, but uh, things that look very elegant often aren't very comfortable. <laughs> this is a map of the hotel, so maybe give you a better idea of where I am. So this is my room here. I found it on the map, 402. So these villas, these are the Al Sahari villas, and these are the ones with the sand dunes in between them. All right. So uh, and. These are the other tented villas, the ones that I cycled down that lane, the Al Khaima villas, which are exactly the same villa as the one I'm staying in, but are just closer together. And then you have these ones, they, they don't have the tent roof, and they're about half the price of this. They're probably like six or seven hundred dollars a night for those ones. And that's how many of them there are. There's 15 of my ones, 16 of the ones close together. And what's that? 22. So altogether, 101 villas in the whole complex and you can see how big it is so uh, I think over there is where I did the Falcon show and they have like a camel track and a horse track they have their own equestrian centre you can learn to horse ride or if you're experienced you can take one of their really prime um, horses out uh, yeah there's a bunch of stuff to this place also what I found was these postcards I was thinking maybe you guys, maybe you guys might want a postcard. So uh, yeah, check my Instagram story. I might do some tiny wee small competition where I'll choose somebody at random and just write a postcard and send it to you. So for the 24 hours after this video goes up, check my Instagram story. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna have a bath. This is kind of nice. I was complaining about the desk, but I like this. This is a nice, a nice wee feature. Of this the wee desk lamp there. I like it. Although there is a, there is a stain on it right there. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it sounds like I'm being really nitpicky, right? Complaining about little stuff. I'm not complaining. I'm actually just pointing it out. I don't, I, I don't give a crap, really. It's just cosmetic, isn't it? It's like whatever. But when you spend this amount of money on a room, I think you can complain about any tiny little thing that you want. But that's a tiny stain. Wait till you see those big chairs outside. Oh, in fact, I've got my light in my pocket. I'll show you. Outside, uh, they are completely stained. The sofa chairs, let's see. These ones here. So these are all like, uh, see this? It's all like water stains. Maybe somebody's been drinking wine and spilled it or something. 
but uh, aye, it's like it's just not that nice, is it? It's just not that nice. It's all uh, all these wee marks, see like that. So uh, yeah, for the price that I'm paying for the room for one night's for one night's revenue, they could replace the uh, they, they could replace these cushions, you know. Um, but yeah, just small cosmetic thing. Not really that bothered. If I wasn't paying so much for the room, I wouldn't even point it out. But uh, yeah, that is the thing. Normally, when I mention or as you guys say, complain about things in hotels, people say, "Well, why didn't you just pay for a five-star hotel then if you wanted that?" Well, I paid for a bloody five-star hotel. So now, what are you going to say? Oh, you should have stayed in the Burj Al Arab then if you don't want stains on your. <laughs> anyway, I'm running this bath. That's me. That's how I'm going to end tonight. I don't think I'm going to do any more in this vlog. It's going to be long enough. I won't vlog the breakfast or anything like that. Tomorrow, I'll enjoy to myself without you guys. Aye.